premium versus budget winter tyres. Are budget winter tyres worth the savings you make buying them? The test should be fairly self-explanatory. We're going to be doing snow testing, ice testing, wet and dry testing using the new Nokian Snowproof and a TriStar Ice Plus S210 Snow. I've chosen this budget winter tyre because it's a tyre that's available in the market and it's a tyre that gets sold a lot because it's sold under three or four different brands. So it should be an interesting test or at least a real world fair test. The other thing we're going to investigate is the difference a tyre size and vehicle makes. Normally these tests are only done with one tyre size and vehicle, but we've expanded this to using two cars. We're using a Volkswagen Golf wearing 205-55-16 tyres and a heavier Volvo S90 wearing 245-45-18 tyres. First test of the day is going to be snow braking. We're here at Nokian's wide, flat, long snow expanse. We're going to be running the two cars at these cones at 60 kilometers an hour and then measuring the distance from 60 kilometers an hour to five kilometers an hour. We never go to zero kilometers an hour because the ABS system is throwing too much variance. We're going to run each car many times, average the distances and then demonstrate it for you on camera. We're going to do the Golfs first and then the wider tired, heavier Volvo second. On the Golf, the premium winter tyre had a 1.8 meter or 4.5% stopping distance advantage. On the heavier Volvo, the gap dramatically increased with a difference nearly eight meters or 22%. Next up, ice breaking. We've come to this amazing frozen lake and we're gonna run the test exactly the same as snow breaking, except for we're gonna be stopping from 35 kilometers an hour, not 60. Because if we tried to stop from 60, we'd probably end up somewhere over there in the ocean. Sadly, due to an issue with the data logger, we didn't get to record specific distances, but on both the Golf and the Volvo, the budget tyre performed really well, with nothing to choose between the two tyres. Next up, the important snow handling tests. I'm first out on the new Nokian Snowproof. This tyre, while it sets up initially with a little bit of understeer, which is kind of what you want on the road for the safest quality, when you realise this car has incredible braking and turning capabilities, you can really use the brakes to pitch in and turn the car on the nose, which makes it a really, really nice balanced tyre to drive. You don't get too much understeer, you don't get too much oversteer, you get complete control over the car, and I'm able to be incredibly consistent lapping this relatively short snow handling circuit. So I've been doing a 134.9 is my quickest time, but I've done a two 135s, a couple of 135.1s, and a 135.2, which for me, in my book, is a sign of a very good snow tire. It's a tire that allows you to be consistent, provides consistent levels of grip, and just doesn't give you any surprises, which is exactly what you want on the road. So congratulations to Nokian for developing what I consider to be an excellent snow handling tyre, but I've yet to drive on the budget counterpart, so that might throw up some surprises. Let's find out. All right, so now I'm out on the budget tyre in the Golf, and while the budget tyre was within a metre or two under snow braking and actually surprisingly good during ice braking, sadly it's snow handling where it all seems to fall apart. Initially when you start driving, you know straight away the front end's more vague, you need more steering lock to get to where you want to be and the front wash is wide. Also when you're trying to brake or put the power down, it just can't get it down and the whole car just feels a little bit more vague, a little bit less balanced, like there's like a layer of wall between you and the ground. That's also represented in the lap time. While the Nokian Snowproof was giving me very stable 134.9s, 135s, 135.1s, the best this tyre can do is a 139.9, which is five seconds slower. And then I'm in the 141s as the surface is changing. So the Nokian was lovely and stable and just kept on giving lap after lap of performance. But this tyre certainly seems to be struggling more as the racing line, as it were, or the driving lines uh, packing down a little bit and getting a little bit more icy. Let's see if it does any better on the Volvo. I've got a feeling it won't. And this is where a premium tyre does a better all round job. And this is just in snow. So the Nokian was good in snow braking, good in ice braking, and has been good in snow handling, which combines obviously braking, traction, and cornering. Whereas the budget tyre could hold its own in the braking, but when it throws in cornering to the mix, it's just struggling a little bit more. As with snow braking, there was a bigger difference on the heavier Volvo. The car was even harder to control and the lap time gap increased to over seven seconds. 
Next, we move on to wet and dry testing to see how the premium and budget tires perform there. Okay, so we found out in the snow and ice that the budget tire, uh, it was okay in the ice, but in the snow, especially snow braking and snow handling, the two tests we did, so especially the two things we did in the snow, there was quite a significant gap to the premium winter tire, the snowproof. So has the budget tire clawed anything back in the dry and wet? Well, in the wet, no, sadly not. Uh, the braking, especially on the heavier Volvo, was really poor. It's 11, 12% further on, which is the difference between stopping safely and quite a big accident. So wet handling, it was a little bit closer, but again, it was as much about lap times as it was subjective differences. The Nokian premium winter tire has a really nice balance with a, just a little bit of understeer at the limit, whereas the budget winter tire, although it did have a more positive turn in, it kind of just switched to understeer and oversteer at will, and the under oversteer is what you want to avoid on the road, because that's the dangerous reaction. In the dry, this is where the budget winter tire actually held its own, and that's the benefit of the bigger outer shoulder blocks. In the dry, in both braking and handling, it was a lot closer, but that that comes at a price. That comes at the wet braking and the snow braking in particular, the, the averageness in the dry. So it matched the premium in the dry on both cars, but couldn't match it in the wet or the snow. And I think that's the point of the video overall. A budget winter tire can be good in one area. And in this case, thanks to the asymmetric design and the outer shoulder blocks being quite big, it's okay in the dry, but for a winter tire, dry performance is probably the least important quality. In the wet, it was a significant step behind, especially on the heavier Volvo. And then in the snow, especially snow handling, it just, it wasn't really there at all. So to conclude the video, um, and I'm gonna do it in the car for a change. Thanks to Nokian for allowing me to put their snowproof up against a fairly decent budget. It was my choice and it was a, it's a real budget tire that people are buying. It's, by far not the worst budget on the market, which is both commendable and worrying when you actually think about the difference in the performance for a winter tire, especially in the snow. But the snowproof, the new tire from Nokian, has performed really well. It's been balanced in all three categories and on both cars, there was no obvious flaw. So I guess that's the conclusion from the video. You can buy a cheap tire and get a good performance quality in one area, but you're not just driving in one factory. You're not buying a winter tire and only driving in the dry, are you? That would be ridiculous. You would buy a summer tire. You'd buy a slick if you're only in the dry. Stick it on your Golf and make it a race car. So when considering tires, especially winter tires, which have to have that third or fourth category of performance, snow and ice, you have to look at the whole picture and that's where budget tires still fall a little bit short. So for me, I wouldn't save the money. Obviously everyone's different. But if you do decide to save the money, I really hope you're not behind me in the snow or in the wet and we have to perform an emergency brake because you're probably going to plow into the back of me and I really don't want that. My insurance is high enough as it is. So just think about every type of performance a tyre has to go through. We haven't looked at rolling resistance. We haven't looked at wear. Generally now budget tyres are wearing really badly because that's how they get the extra dry and wet performance so that's another thing to factor in and if i'd had time to do wear testing i certainly would and i'm confident that the budget tire wouldn't have performed as well as the premium so thank you to Nokian for allowing me to make this test on their two facilities white hell up in the north of finland and this facility in nokia in the, in the south of finland and central finland um Nokian did invent winter tyres. They are based in Nokia, which is a place in Finland. Also where the mobile phone company came from before they disappeared and were bought by Microsoft. Bit of trivia not many people know. Um, if you have any questions about winter tyres or premium winter tyres or budget winter tyres, ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer everything. But don't forget, there is a massive website behind everything. Tyreviews.co.uk or tyreviews.com, depending on how you want to spell it and which ending you want to use, um, has all the information you could possibly want on tyres. So think Think about browsing that and asking questions. Maybe you can answer your own question. Um, if you've liked, enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for plenty more fun tyre related stuff in the future. And as always, safe motoring because that's what this video has been about. The safest way of conducting winter motoring.